I love this man. I don't care who knows it. I don't know how he does it. And the it is everything that he does. He is back here on the Rich Eisen Show, chief Washington correspondent for CNN, the host of The Lead with Jake Tapper, State of the Union with Jake Tapper. And he's got a new novel out. I love the Hellfire Club. It is a page turner and the devil may dance. I cannot wait to read the latest novel from Jake Tapper. How are you, Jake? I'm so good. And I, and I love you so much. But I, I don't know why you bring up all the... The, the one area where we disagree. So, like we, you and I mm. agree on so many things yes. in, in life, yes. in, in entertainment, in mm. broadcasting, and you constantly bring up, constantly, yes. the one thing where we disagree. And you know what? I've been holding this in reserve. Um, Uh-oh. But I, you know, because of spoilers, I don't want to spoil the movie for people. Okay. But... The pivotal moment in Die Hard, yes. the pivotal moment mm-hmm. where John McClane is not going to survive. The whole mission is going to be a failure. He is going to die. Holly is going to be killed, et cetera. Holly is her name. <laughs> yes. And then he sees a Christmas display with presents and Christmas tape. Mm-hmm. This is the climax of the movie. And he, we don't know that he does this until later, with the Christmas tape that only exists because it's Christmas at Nakatomi Plaza, Mm. he tapes the gun to his back and thus surprises the bad guy and saves the day, period. Spoilers. I apologize to your listeners. It's long. It's it's, it's been long enough, Jake Tapper, and you're, again, referring to the fact that um, I say Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. movie. You, You say it is. And we just showed that uh, setup for our Peacock audience, now our radio audience joining us here. Um, I just set that just to set the stage for the fact that for fans of yours, Jake, yeah. and I am one. I am a huge oh. fan of yours, Jake. I'm the president of the, of the Richard Eisen fan club. Well, we're, we're back and forth then. I mean, we're simpatico yeah. like that. That for fans of yours and fans of your writing, that yeah. the fact that you have a new novel coming yes, out I right do. now, The Devil May Dance. Comes out tomorrow. Just like Die Hard, it's like Christmas in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> you see I what I'm saying? I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I like, so, so people want to have their summer vacation and a page-turning book, which is what I did uh, with the Hellfire Club uh, on a beach, and it's perfect material for that. Perfect, perfect. So for their summers, it's, it's like Christmas arriving uh, out of season. Jake, that's why I kind of bring that I up. Pre- I appreciate it, and I love it, and I love where you're going. You're, go- you're, <laughs> you're, you're going to a positive place, and I appreciate well, that. Cause, Just so you know, people yes. need to understand that when you karaoke with Rich Eisen, you are, it is basically... You sit down and you just listen to Rich Eisen sing Sinatra songs for an hour with a lovely voice, a, a deep baritone. Well, I, but we need to say this, Jake. Um, it's not because I hog the mic. I just, I'm just no, giving no, no, the no. people what they want. Yes, you know, it's yes, requ- yes, yes. I take by request in the oh, room. Yes, yes, yes. No, no. Okay. You need to put asses in the seats. A hundred percent. That's what that's about. It's not hogging the mic by by any stretch. But my only point is, yes. I think you will really enjoy this book because yes. it presents Sinatra as a person, as a character. Uh, it warts and all, good things and bad things. And he is, the premise of the book is based on a real story, a real thing that happened, which is, as you know, Sinatra and the Rat Pack worked their heart out to elect JFK in 1960. Uh, and then Sinatra felt that when President Kennedy came to the to California mm. at some point, he would, you know, of course, President Kennedy would stay with him uh, at his Rancho Mirage compound. And he had all sorts of construction done to it. He had rooms built. He had telephone lines put in. He had a helipad built. <laughs> and then Attorney General Robert Kennedy uh, was starting to get hinky about this because he thought, you know, I am fighting organized crime here, and Sinatra literally is friends with mobsters. He's Sam Giancana has stayed at this compound. I don't know if I can let my brother stay there. That's the true story, and that was the premise for The Devil May Dance, which is Charlie and Margaret, my main characters from the Hellfire Club, he's a congressman, she's a zoologist, go out to investigate to find out if Sinatra is actually mobbed up, and he's in the middle of filming The Manchurian Candidate, I love that. and he meets all these folks. So I really, like, even if none of your listeners buy this book... <laughs> 
you really will like this book. And I mailed you one, so yes. you should have it arriving any, anytime soon, sometime soon. You will really like it. I, I guarantee it. I have, I have the book, Jake, and you know, I may or may not already have a photograph that of me reading it, not staged at all. When I post it on Instagram, <laughs> it's not staged at all. Uh, being totally engrossed by the material, Jake. You will. Already, you, will you will. I can't wait. And uh, something else. There is a song in the book mm-hmm. called "The Devil May Dance" that uh, that um, I wrote. I did not write the melody. <laughs> Because I, as you know, do not have a good pitch. Well, the, the great Sammy Kahn must have written it, right, Jake? I mean, if you're going to go real here, I mean, Van Houston, I think, was uh, <laughs> was the. But but this is you'll enjoy this. So when the lawyers are going over the book to make sure that nobody can sue me or them, <laughs> because they're all sorts of people, real people. Most of them are dead, but real people uh, in the book. And the Church of Scientology makes an appearance, et cetera, et cetera. Well, and the thing that's amazing, Jake Tapper here on The Rich Eisen Show, and I will uh, gladly toot your horn, sir, is, again, in the Hellfire Club, you mentioned... No, 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 seriously. (laughs) What you just mentioned, you know, uh, one of the characters, um, Margaret Martyr, is a zoologist. I mean, Brockman, you read the Hellfire Club. I'm learning about... Uh, I'm learning about animals. I'm learning about yeah. everything about zoology. I'm learning about that stuff. Your research in is... In a fun way. In a fun no, way. It is. No, no, no. It is. Sure. It's great. Okay. I'm not boring anybody. Uh, this is my way to point out that the research you do is intense. It's clear that you have researched everything, every last detail. And I'm sure you 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 may have a person or people help you with that, but no. Nope. When there you go. So when the hell do you have time to do all this? Did you write this Great book question. while you're covering the 2020 election? Like I wrote this the, book. Uh, let's see. The the first one came out in 2018. So I've been I wrote it in 2018, 2019, and 2020. So I wrote it during those periods. Um, when when the hell do you have time to do all this? If you write if you if you if you're in a writing project. And I assigned you a writing project. You might remember yes. a couple years ago, I assigned you a book. And I did write. nothing with it, Jake, because I'm, I'm a that slacker a, compared to that you. That is a bestseller. You just have to sit there. But here's the deal. Okay. You already know all this stuff in your book, though. I'm not going to spoil it because that's your, that's your project. Okay. But if you, if you are in the middle of a writing project and if you promise to yourself and you pledge to write 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes, every, you can find 15 minutes in your day. Lunch, breakfast, right before you go to bed, 15 minutes is not that hard. Even if that's all you do, at the end of the week, that's an hour, 45 minutes of writing. That's four pages, three pages. I mean, that's not nothing. So it adds up. And, but let me tell but, so anyway, I was able to do that. Plus, in 2020, I was at home broadcasting from April through August. Right. So there's an hour and a half commute I don't have anymore. Uh, plus, you know, normally I would be traveling all over the country covering the presidential race. Not so much in in 2020. I I did two trips once to Michigan to interview Biden, and then in December I drove to Delaware to interview him and the vice president. That was it. Those are my two trips. In no election year have I ever had so little travel. So I did. So I had more time on my hands than normal. But the the thing I wanted to tell you about the the fake Sinatra song that I wrote is yes. so the lawyers are going through it, the book to make sure that nobody can sue. Yes, and. They say, you know, you can only put one line of a song in a book because otherwise people will sue you. The, 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 whoever owns the rights to the song will say, that's our property. You can't do more than uh, fair use is one line, period. Right. Um, so they're like, you're, Tapper, you're crazy. You, you know that you can only do one line. We've been through this before. And you have an entire Sinatra song in here. The whole every lyric, and it's like wound through the climax of the book, which takes place at the 1962 Oscars. Like, what are you doing? And I said, it's not real. I made it up. It's not a real song. And that was like, the, and they said, well, you need to put that in there because people are going to go crazy trying to Google it, trying to find it. But that's like the greatest compliment that you can give. Of somebody. course like, it I is. I thought it was uh, real. They thought it was real. Well, it's also the fact that the New York Times in reviewing it said that uh, what Janet Maslin said, she missed the book when she was done with it. So congrats that was, uh, on that, man. She's tough. She gave my she gave a middling review of my first book. So for her to give such a nice review of this one meant a, a tremendous amount to me. Well, I mean, I couldn't be more happy for you. What do, what do I do with one of my friends here, um, who you met in D.C. Uh, when you were on the show last, who w- finally took the recommendation of mine to watch the Manchurian Candidate, the old 
Sinatra film that was a classic, but then removed from the theaters by Frank himself because of the assassination of John F. Kennedy and how it could be somehow construed for him to foreshadow it in the in the brilliant movie that he watched the first half of it, stopped watching it. How long ago did did you stop watching it, Chris? It's got to be six months. He maybe. hasn't watched it again. What do, what do I do with that, Jake? You haven't watched. He hasn't watched the second half of no, it. No, Jake. Jake. In my defense, <laughs> as, dude. Dude. Before you say what you've got going on, you just heard this man's work ethic. Okay, what he's got yes, going on I in his life. Understand, but Jake, as Come you on. might know, I have a one-year-old. Like, yeah. I don't have any time. By the time he dude, goes he's got to two bed, children. But they're right, not. I, they're I, not I, one. I can, I can sympathize. Like I I'm so <laughs> exhausted at seven thirty oh, every night. God. Like because you guys think Christmas uh, Christmas comes in the Die Hard uh, collection every <laughs> I year. I sympathize, but years. I will say that movie is really ahead of its time. But young, and yeah. really trippy. Not quite like a no. really weird movie. Like oh, I yeah. watching it now. Mm. Watching and I just watched it uh, a, a few uh, weeks ago. Um, yeah. Because because uh, some of the book, some of my book takes place while they're filming this, uh, Criterion asked me to do an intro to The Manchurian Candidate, Look which is you. a huge honor because I'm a huge fan oh of gosh. old classic films. So I watched it again, and oh my God, it is such a weird movie. It is, in a great way, very trippy, way ahead of its time. And the idea that it took place, that it came out a year before JFK was assassinated, um, where, you know, when the movie is about a major political assassination. Do you know this, by the way? Do you know that Arthur Krim, who was the head of Universal, I'm sorry, the head of United Artists, uh-huh. which, uh, which released the film, and also a major Democratic uh, fundraiser and advisor, Arthur Krim put a hold on it. He would not let the movie be made. And then Sinatra had to go to Hyannisport, beg President Kennedy, please tell Krim to let this happen. This is a great movie. And, and Kennedy had read the book, uh, and the book is even more trippy than the movie. The, the, the book, wow. the mom of the assassin, there's actually like actual incest that takes place. In the, in the movie, it's just like implied kind of. Yes, the, that's right, uh, with Angela Lansbury and whatever. But I yeah. guess. And so Kennedy's reaction was, uh, that's great, who plays, who plays the mom? And uh, at, the, at the time, they had not even cast Angela Lansbury. You know who Sinatra, Sinatra wanted in the part? Lucille Ball. <laughs> True story. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, Jake, I'm up against the end of an hour, as you know, uh, to use a phrase that pays in the news business, so I'll have to leave it there. Um, I love you, Jake Tapper. Congrats too, on buddy. this book. We'll chat Thank again soon. Thank you so much. I'll talk Congrats. to you soon. See you, Everybody buddy. get the book. It's going to be amazing. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.